Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at 15 markers that um, you get on the research methods exams in psychology. So here is a little example for you. Um, the principal of a large sixth form college wants to investigate the ways their students study. They have designed a self-report questionnaire to investigate where and how their students work. The researchers want to use a sample of 200 students from their college. Design a follow-up st study to investigate the types of re revision activities the students use when learning material for an exam. You should include the following in your design and justify your research choices. Semi-structured interview, open and closed questions, rating scale question, opportunity sample. You should refer to your experience of carrying out your own research. And this is very important to do in the exam because you will drop marks if you don't. Um, so. This is, an, this is an answer that I've prepared and uh, my teacher actually did some of the answer but I've kind of expanded it and added some stuff to it. So yeah. In order to, to conduct this study on the types of revision activities the students use when learning material for an exam, I would begin by obtaining 30 participants from a school 6 form aged 16 to 18. This would be achieved by asking the first 15 males and the first 15 females who walk uh, into the sixth form common room if they would like to participate in this research on the study habits of students. I would use this number of participants as it is a manageable amount to cope with and they would be relatively easy to obtain, especially using an, uh, an opportunity sample which is cost and time effective compared to other sampling techniques such as random sampling. Similarly, when I completed my research on sleeping and dreaming, where I used a questionnaire to analyse people's sleep, I also used an opportunity sample of 30 people from the sixth form that I attend, as this allowed me to obtain the sample efficiently. After the, after the sample of 30 participants has been obtained, I would provide each of them with an appointment time, uh, 20 minutes long, where we would meet in a classroom to conduct the semi-structured interview on their study habits. All of the participants will be asked the same uh, standard questions, such as do you find it more effective to revise alone or with others? And they will also be asked some follow-up questions which will be made up spontaneously. These follow-up questions might, for example, ask the participants why it is that they prefer to work alone or with others. As these follow-up questions and some of the main questions asked will not be, all, will not be the same for all the participants, this type of interview is a semi-structured interview. The advantage of this type of interview is, in this study is that the researcher can ask questions which are related specifically to what the interviewee has said and subsequently they may be able to gather important information which may not have been considered when these standard questions were written. Furthermore, uh, this is more like a real-life conversation that, than a structured interview uh, would be and therefore may make the interviewee feel more relaxed and therefore give more in-depth answers. When I conducted my own study on sleeping and dreaming, I also used a standard list of questions in a questionnaire and thus I did not benefit from these advantages. In the interview, I would incorporate a few rating scale questions such as on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is strongly disagree and 10 is strongly agree, how far do you agree that it is necessary to revise in silence? An advantage of using questions like these, uh, rating scale questions, is that they provide researchers with, with the quantitative data which means the participants' results can be easily summarised and analysed to show trends or differences in the sample. In my study I also used some rating scale questions where I asked the participants, for instance, on a scale of 1 to 10 where 1 is not important at all and 10 is very important, how important do you think it is to get a good, good night's sleep? Furthermore, I would also use some open questions in this interview such as describe how you would spend a day revising and some closed questions such as do you find it more effective to take breaks when studying? Please circle yes or no. Including both of these types of data would allow the researcher to obtain both quantitative and qualitative data which means that both in-depth detailed information and numerical data would be obtained. Similarly, in my questionnaire on sleeping and dreaming, I also included both types of these questions. The interview would be tape recorded and later transcribed to identify specific features of it that are common or different amongst the 30 participants' answers. So as you can see, I've ticked all of these boxes here and referred to my own research at the end of each paragraph, which is a good idea to do. At the end of every paragraph, just make sure you just do a quick reference and you should get the marks. Um, this is a bit more detailed than you probably need in the exam, but I hope you understood the structure and how you go about answering these questions. So thank you for watching and I'll be making some more videos, so make sure you check those out. Thank you.